Hi everyone, it is Jane Davenport and we are going to do a little bit of creating whimsical girls with the, me this morning. Just one second. Gus, can you let the Facebook group know? Yeah. I should have said that before I turned the video on, but I said the time, so I'm here exactly at the time. So, at the end of the broadcast, I'm going to be announcing our two winners for the incredible uh, competition. Oh, is competition the right word? But the giveaway that we're working on and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people have been uploading um, all pages from my Whimsical Girls book. And I can't even begin to describe the joy that I personally get from seeing how people are using uh, my books and the art supplies. I, I just put so much heart and passion into everything that I do. And, but you really don't know how things are going to land, you know, when you're creating something. Um, I mean, that's with everybody. And to see something that is embraced and that people are enjoying and that they're finding helpful and um, inspirational is just such a personal um, happy making thing for me. So I'm just super um, delighted that everyone that has uh, entered this, there's two um, places to have entered. One's on Instagram and uh, just using the hashtag create whimsical girls and in the Facebook group. So if you're joining here now and you don't know what I'm talking about with my Facebook group, I've got an amazing Facebook group. Uh, you can just look for it. Jane Davenport Mixed Media uh, on Facebook, obviously. And uh, I think it's oh, around 21,000 people and we've all gathered together because we love art supplies, we love creating and it's a really great bunch of people, just really awesome, lovely people, very supportive and if you're not a social media person, um, I think you might get a little bit of a surprise in that group. So shout out to all of my Davin peeps and my artemologists. <laughs> Hello. Um, okay, so we've got this. We're going to do some work in this. Um, I have got a little bit of a sore throat. I, uh, I've got my tea and I've got, sorry, uh, Angus made me a big honey and lemon, um, uh, you know, with hot water. So I've had like six of these. And this is the really the best thing that works when I get a bit of a sore throat. So I'm just going to take a sip now. Mm. Uh, so if you want to work along with me, I suggest you get some art supplies at hand. You've got your book here. And um, yeah, uh, as always with a live video, if someone gets on there and is silly in the messages, just please ignore them. Um, yeah, people just, they're just looking for oxygen and we just ignore them. Anyway, <laughs> the only other thing I want to show you before I flip the camera around is, look at these. These have just arrived. Like literally, before I came on camera, the truck was here making lots of noise and I was like, you have to get out of here. Oh, but these are little tubes mermaid tubes that we have just gotten into the store they've got the jane davenport uh, logo angus has just been unpacking them he's getting them up onto the store at the moment but you can put you can put i've put my matte medium in them and you can put your paints in them but they're also for travel so for shampoo and lotions and even not just for travel i'm totally going to put these up in my bathroom and because they wear glasses um sometimes the bottles like what they write of what the things are so tiny the writing it's only the different colors that let me know what's in the bottle so i'm quite happy to have lots of little mermaid tails and i can remember which color is which so that's really cool so i just had to show you those they've got nothing to do with what we're going to be doing today um i think that i will Oh, I'll just tell you what I'm probably going to be using because this is a live video. Who knows? Who knows what I'll end up using? Uh, these are my watercolors. Um, one of the sets. This is the bright set. 
Uh, so I'm probably going to use these guys. Um, I've already given them a little uh, spritz um, here just to get the watercolour activated and juicy. And uh, I'm also going to use my new smooth markers. So there's, I've got them out of their little packet, the little wallets. I've got these cute little trays that are um, sort of made with paper covered in like card. But I got these when I was in Japan, in Kyoto. I just love them. They remind me of my trip. I've got my cool colors in one, my warm colors in the other. And the wonderful thing about watercolor and smooth markers or any alcohol markers, but smooth markers in particular, is it's not that they don't relate to each other or um, they don't interact with each other. It's almost like they cannot see each other. They're both invisible to the other one. They just are not aware of the other's existence. So when you, they don't intermingle virtually at all. And it's a wonderful thing. Uh, in my Whimsical Girls book, I've got lots of different types of papers. Uh, there's a paper in here that's actually um, nominated as marker paper, which just means it's a nice, smooth, fast surface that markers particularly like. Um, if you, just as a little tip in general, if you're working uh, with a medium, be it watercolor, acrylics, markers, whatever it is, if you're not getting the results that you expect, it's usually the surface you're working on a different surface and it's not that the result that you're getting is bad it's just that it's not what you're expecting so sometimes you get a little bit of a oh, shock and you think what what is going on here so some uh, so watercolors on watercolor paper obviously alcohol markers markers on marker paper but hmm, i don't like being told what to do by my art supplies. It's a collaboration, sure. Uh, I'll take some uh, suggestions from them, but I don't like them to be too fussy. So as long as you know what to expect or what's going to be happening if you use alcohol marks on watercolor paper, there's nothing to say you can't use them on that, as you will see. Um, it's just that uh, different papers are going to react differently to different things. And what watercolor and what markers, alcohol markers in particular, what they both love the most or behave probably the the best or the mo in the most expected way are uh, very opposite types of paper however you can force them to work on whatever you like you know you're just you might get buckling you might get bleed through but all of those things are overcomable it's just you just have to know what it is so it's just knowing your art supplies anyway this is enough of me babbling on I think we should put this down here. I'm going to grab the phone. I have to do it all on one phone. So I'm going to grab the phone, hopefully not turn off the broadcast. Ugh. Wait a minute. Wait, here we go. <laughs> I've got to wrangle this thing to the ground. Okay. Oh, sorry, hand. I've got to spin the whole camera around, put it upside down. Hello. Do this. Ah, there we go. Uh -huh. So I'm just going to call out to Angus. Is everything okay? Yeah, perfect. Um, and are there any questions? If you let me know any questions that people have, I can try and answer them as best I can. Okay, so this is my um, copy of Whimsical Girls. Oh, I just have to have a quick little sip. I'm sorry. Oh, my little throat. Okay, so in my copy, um, I've got a few on the go, but I started in this one, and I think I filmed uh, this um, when I was uh, doing my first little video of the book, and I left this at my new friend, uh, Catherine Heigl's house, and she sent me the funniest DM like a little video where she was pretending to keep it. But I, I, so I've just got it back just in time for the broadcast. But I'll just flip through and show you some of the pages I've been working on. So Gus, can everyone see this okay? Do I need to zoom in? It's all good. Here I've used my aqua pastels just, just so I can uh, show you. And the nice thing about working in a book like this is that it's a head start. If you're having a day 
where you just need a friend to create with. That's how I want you to feel about this book. You can have an arty party with me um, whenever you feel like it, just by creating in the book. Now, this is all, with, so, sorry, this was with Aqua Pastels. That's these guys. This is mainly with Magic Wands, which are these beautiful pencils. Oh, I feel like using them today. They're really, colour pencils and, colour pencils are good with, with just about everything. But, um, oh, I love my paint. So, oh, I've started on her. Maybe I should do these girls. So this is the colour, the colouring paper. So it's just a mid-weight, smooth paper that's good for a lot of things. When I put watercolour on it, it will buckle a little, but I know that. And seriously, buckling, I love the texture. This side here is a little bit buckled where I've got a bit of paint going on to the smooth paper. And just feeling this, I love the texture of the matte paint. So this is one of my paints. Um, and then the smooth, I'm really digging this. Might come back to her. Um, yeah. Oh, that's, um, I think that's the collage. No, that's from the sticker, one of the stickers. It's in the back. So what I'm doing here is I'm really looking to see what calls to me. Um, this is some of the collage paper from the back of the book. I'm just looking for what calls to me so that I you know, can have a little look at what it feels, what I feel like creating. Oh, coloured pencils on craft paper. Could you get more delicious? <gasps> Yum. Can't tell you what that is because that's something secret. <laughs> um, okay, I'm, I'm feeling this vibe here. Now, I already know that the watercolour, it'll work on this, but it doesn't have the surface. Uh, and doesn't have uh, the magical properties of the watercolor a watercolor paper which has sizing and uh, can let the watercolor spread out so what might happen is the watercolor will just sink straight through so I need to just do a little test so I'm gonna do a little test here is everything okay Gus Oops. Yeah, it's all good. Can the slap that handle oil paint? sorry can the slap that Oh, I don't really know because I don't use oil paint. Um, Angus, that's the person I'm talking to off camera is uh, my husband, Angus. I just dipped my paintbrush in my honey um, concoction. I didn't have any paint on it, so I'm still going to drink it. Actually, uh, could you just pass me a cup, Gus, with... I have got no um, water receptacle. I cleaned them all out in a, in a gross attack of efficiency. So I'm just going to squirt a bit, oh, squirt a bit of water on there. <laughs> Mental. And really what I just want to do on here is just test my supplies. So always on my papers, I've got little bits and pieces on the corners where I'm doing whatever I feel like. Sorry, I did just squirt water all over my table. So I'm just going to pop a little bit of watercolour. So I think it's going to be, the watercolour on here will be fine. It won't spread out and do magical things like watercolour does on other papers, but um, it's still gorgeous. So, still on the pretty. You used to do the dots. Oh, this is, um, I'm always testing products, and this is a product that I was testing. And um, let's just say I did the spots with um, something that I'm testing. Mm -hmm. So I'm disappearing into my work a little here and the paintbrush that I'm using is my little detailer brush which I love drawing with. Oh, I've got a little bit of a water spot there. That's what's happening. This paper is absorbing the watercolour. So I don't want to get it too wet so I already know that. Then let's test some of the smooth markers so we know what to expect. And with alcohol markers, I did my training for these in Paris. Uh, because of commercial uh, illustration, uh, I used to do fashion illustration, and these are just fantastic. It's the same colour every time. They're quick, they're fast, um, and they're just, I love them. I love alcohol markers, so I cannot even begin to tell you how adorable it is that I have my own. I'm so happy about that. So as I put this down, I'm wondering if you can see how streaky it looks 
when I first put it down and what I'm looking for is that focusing Gus yeah. um, what I'm looking for is that it blends out a little so um, if it doesn't that doesn't mean I can't use the paper it just is a little indication of what to expect so when I put it down see how you can see between the strokes and then as the alcohol dissipates into the paper and drags the dyes along with it um, it is bleeding out so I know what to expect on every different paper because this is a translucent well it's really a transparent medium you can see whatever is underneath um, you can see straight through like you can't this is not an opaque medium um, oh I forgot what my point was sorry Okay. Oh, okay. Yes. So the color of the paper has a massive impact on the color of the um, ink. So, you know, just all, I always test my colors. I did not need to do such a massive test. I was having fun. I apologize. Um, <laughs> so what I think I might do is do alcohol marker on here, add in some watercolor as well. And then I've also got the acrylic paint. Now, one of the fantastic things watercolor and uh, um, the smooth markers they have a relationship well the relationship is no relationship you saw me just draw over this watercolor here even when it's virtually wet I can draw over it and they just don't react or bleed with each other at all nothing um, they just don't know that each other are there uh, but smooth marker and acrylic paint this is a solvent and it will start to make the acrylic fall apart if I wanted to, if I put enough on. Handy tip, if you get acrylic paint or matte medium or any acrylic on your clothes, you can actually remove it with a colourless alcohol marker if it's small enough. Uh, you just have to work it in there. So it will, they, this will work with this, it's just you're going to get a very different result. So, and I love that. I know what it is, I've experimented um, tons in my time it's going to make the colors go different you actually even sometimes get a little bit of open time you can smudge it around um, but it's just a matter of experimenting that's why um, one of the things about having this one of the things about an art journal which is this is an art journal um, it's just an art journal that I'm doing with you a collaborative art journal if you will um, it's one of the one of the advantages is you learn because you're doing more art um, you learn more about your art supplies and what they do and um, sometimes you something will happen and you think you've made a mistake or you might um, tell yourself off um, for um, you know doing something wrong and it's not that you're doing it nothing wrong has happened something unexpected happened and it's just a matter of uh, allowing that um, now I've just got to tell you there's a react there's no reaction but I just love the rough edge I've put this paint on here very very quickly probably to clean off my brush and I've just thought oh, I'll just put it on this girl but the bit of the acrylic and the um, smooth marker yum I just want to say yum um, so it's sitting on there very differently you can see how different it is from here to here I'm going to get a very very light different effect and especially because this is matte it's going to pastelize everything if I put mermaid marker on here which is super bright even mermaid marker dulls right down on matte acrylic so it, again it's not that you're ever doing anything wrong it's just that it's just going to behave differently and then learning those behaviors um, just is part of learning your tools and learning um, what it is that uh, makes you either happy or not <laughs> and you might make you unhappy the first time you see it but you can like I said use it to your advantage um, so what I'm also doing I've, I can't do it on here if I put a bit of the alcohol marker down the smooth marker and try and move it with my finger nothing's gonna happen if I'm really quick um, even though this is matte if I put this down I can rub it very quickly with my finger and I can get a little bit of a blur to happen, a little bit of spreading of that ink. Um, also, I'm getting a watercolor-like effect here. Oh, it's so funny talking at the same time as creating. Um, 
I'm getting a little um, it's, um, small to see, uh, but I want to, I want you to see if you can see the edges that I'm getting with the alcohol markers, and that's what you can get with watercolor. You get an edge, a stronger edge as the medium, the dyes flow a little bit more towards the edges or the pigments. Um, so you can get a really nice soft result. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm adding this color called wing which is as you can see like a light like a light purple light lilac uh, I'm adding that to the shadowed areas of the face so face parts of the face that I want to push back into space so this is a warm lilac I also have um, a cool lilac this is called flight so this is in the feathered friends uh, set which I do have the little wallet just here. And you can stack those little wallets on your desk as well, on your table. All right, table. So I'm just gonna go over the top of this, some of the purple, not all of it, just so I've got a variety. I've got a variation of color. Um, because I'm creating in front of other people, I'm probably going a little bit slow, I apologize. It's just, I'm just warming up. As you can see, if I don't quite get in the, <laughs> um, don't get it perfectly in line, um, doesn't really matter. Colouring in between the lines is overrated. How's everyone going, girls? Any, everyone, any questions? Any let the Facebook people know? Good. Thank you. So I'm just adding a little bit more purple. I think I might do, oh, I think that was her hair actually. Oh, well. There's going to be a little bit of crossover, right? But you can see how different these two lilacs are. This is closer to blue. This is closer to pink. So this is closer to fire, pink, red, orange. It's a warm purple. This is closer to blue, blues, greens, those sorts of colors. So it's, it's a cool purple. So they're going to work together. Um, but they're also just handy to have the two purples. So I always have a variety of purples and everything that I do and all my sets where well, I try to because it's just so handy. I've got these very, very bright pink cheeks, which I personally love bright pink cheeks um, on myself. <laughs> well, I have them naturally. <laughs> There's not much that can be done. Um, but I am going to start to integrate that a little. So this is a color called Crest. And as you can see, I'm mainly using the broad uh, coloring nib or the big brush nib um, in my, uh, so far, because it's so fine at the end and I can turn it on its side and get a broad, on its side and get a broader line as well, but I can also get that very fine line. If I want a super fine line, I can change to the bullet nib. Um, and I'm, I really want to give a little bit of structure and definition to um, these eyelashes. So I'm just going to come over this lash line now. And maybe the very darkest points, maybe just under the nose here. And just dab that on. Oh, it's got like a watercolor effect, and I love it. And I might give the start of the little antlers. I'm going to give them this pink base. And then I'll come over with another color. But I just want it to have this sort of pink base so they look soft. What I've loved about the um, Create Whimsical Girls Challenge is how different people have made the uh, different pages. They've put the girls in different settings and made them, you know, completely different. I try and leave it open so that you can, you know, bring whatever it is that you want. So I'm just adding this into, so this is a colour called Chick and the last colour I used was Crest. And I might even come in, I think. So this cheek is very high compared to that one. I'm going to come in a little bit with uh, some colored pencil. 
Colored pencils, very interesting, especially in this combination with the acrylic as well, because I will show you. I'm just I'm adding more color to um, the height of her cheekbone uh, into the eyes a little as well. Oh, I love the it's picking up the texture. But I can use this to blend the colors out as well. So I might go with a really light color. Um, but I can, because this will dissolve the colored pencil. And I can get more effects um, with this as well by dissolving the colored pencil, adding this. This, If I add lots and lots, it'll eventually even dissolve the uh, acrylic. It'll eat into the acrylic. Um, might add a bit more of a lighter pink up there as well. It might not show up, so I have to go quite dark. So for me, I'm like, yum, because I'm getting the orange and that these sort of pinky undertones as well. And this looks like watercolor and I am in heaven. What about if in rather, because I mean, this is an art journal. What about if she's not got her eyes shut? What happens if she has her eyes open? Let's do it. Let's just do it. One of the reasons I love, this is the Epic Pen, the Jane Davenport Epic Pen. Um, it's going to struggle over the pencil a little bit because of all the wax. Side eye, of course. Try and get the eyes to match up. Oh, I like it. I like to change it up. So I'm just rattling around in here off camera. And for some reason, I have zero paint over pens. So this is Unicorn. And it's been sitting up on its um, bottom. So it probably needs a little shake. So I'm just going to get in here. So I've always got these little white dots on my hands from all my different paint pens as I test them for their opacity. Um, so I like it when it is a little sheer and then it's buildable. I can build up on it. So now the ink is flowing so I can really get a bit more of light there. A little bit on the nose and coming up here, maybe a little on the lip. Not too much and I don't want to make it too liney, too formulaic. Um, just like I just did then. <laughs> I might get a little bit of light on her cheek here. Uh, I'm going to use some... I should probably wait for the acrylic, for the Epic Pen to dry properly, but who ever waited for anything? <laughs> You'll let me know for any other questions, Gus? Yeah. Oh, she's pretty. Um, and what I might even do is, I'm not sure if this will work, so experiment, experiment is fun. Um, this, this is incredible ink in the new little Crayola markers. Uh, so I've got a video of this coming, actually. Of what I've been doing with these and the weird thing about these is they're very very lame the ink comes in very light so this is going to be water soluble though so I wouldn't want I just have to be a bit careful but it does add a nice little shadow so this is the incredible ink this is violet syrup which is well not that one but where is she somewhere an ink like that but not that one oh, I don't have any violet syrup so. Um, so I'm just building up some details here. Well, this is fun. I've been visiting my sister and um, I haven't been um, doing any art really. Oh, a little bit with her kitties, mermaids, dinosaurs, that sort of thing. 
and we went to Jeffree Star. I took her to see Jeffree Star. I wanted her to become as obsessed with him as I am. And I think it's worked. I think she's now obsessed. And I was even going to go up. He had another event today. He's a makeup artist and I don't know. He's like an identity. I was going to go up this morning. Well, no, it was yesterday morning. And I just, after seeing the crowds in Melbourne and the big crowd that we had in Sydney, I just thought, no, nah, it's going to be mad. And it was. And I already saw him. got to let other people have a chance, right? I'm just adding a little bit of strength to that. Oh, that eyebrow will be a bit dark if I use this. Oh, maybe. I can always knock it back later. Um, I might actually bring this. This is a colour called Galanour, which is a French name for swamp hen. <laughs> and if I was a swamp hen, I think I would rather be called Galanour. Swamp, swamp hen just doesn't sound... That glamorous does it especially for how glamorous they are they're sort of this beautiful dark electric blue teal colors and indigos so in reality it's this nice dark gray have you come up with the names of things and did you buy your makeup from Jeffrey? oh yes oh I should have said so I always get asked where do my every time I have my glasses my different glasses these ones that I'm wearing today are fuss of fuss and my lipstick today is Jeffree Star. It's a colour called Doll Parts. <gasps> Whoever asked that, I love you so much. <laughs> because I'm so obsessed. I've got, got a little kit of minis. And it's got all the different colours. So I think I'm going to swap over to... Um, let's do some watercolour now. And we'll make this girl a little bit different. Because I've just shown you how the different things work on acrylic. I cannot tell you how... Gorgeous, the lips are I'm just freaking out about their gorgeousity. And I don't like that black line there, so I'm going to come over um, that pen. We always have to give things a little bit longer to dry on acrylic because uh, there's just nowhere for them to go. Uh, so they have to, they can't sink in anywhere, so they've got to just dry. So you just have to give them a minute. Would you use cool purple? Yes, someone has just asked, would I use a cool purple for shadows? And um, I use all purples, but yes, a cool um, purple for shadows and also um, a cool blue. Well, all blues are cool, but um, a little bit of blue in a shadow is a gorgeous creature as well, which just reminded me, so I'm just picking this up as well. May as well pop a bit of blue in here and come over to integrate the alcohol markers. It can't, they can't really make the paper pill uh, just because of the, um, the transporter, because of the solvent. If this was a water-based marker and I went rubbing over it, like a Tombow or just any water-based marker, it would just make pilling happen, especially on this paper. Uh, but on this, no, it doesn't. Actually, let's add a little bit of the cool um, lilac into the eyes here. So if you've got your questions, please ask away. Um, Angus is relaying them to me. Do you feel like you're doing makeup on the drawing? Oh, totally. Absolutely. I'm absolutely obsessed with makeup. I always have been. Um, I still remember when I... Yeah, I got my first job and I had my own money and um, I went along to the um, the big store and where I grew up was Maya and I went along and I um, Yves Saint Laurent had just bought out a collection called Ovation and it was like set the world on fire it was all bright colors and like parrot eyes it was amazing and I bought myself a lipstick and some eyeshadows and I took all this, you know, I had my makeup done at the place. I took all this time in the morning getting my, you know, doodaring up and getting all my lipstick and my eyeshadow done. I walked past my dad's office. He's um, worked at home and I remember him just seeing me. He didn't say anything to me. He just started yelling for my mum, Liz, Liz, Jane's wearing lipstick. It just gave him such a fright to see me all like a lady like i went from a kid to <laughs> a full-on 
Well, I, it wasn't vampy, it wasn't trashy, it was if so wrong, it was very classy. So anyway, I have love, so have you know, we had sat my dad down, had a little talk, that these changes were going to be coming. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, makeup is just such a massive uh, love of mine, I'm so interested in it. I, I watch all my beauty gurus every morning, I'm totally obsessed. <laughs> but yes, I feel like I'm doing... I'm doing their makeup for sure. Do you prepare pages for watercolor? Do I prepare pages for watercolor? Um, I have got some fantastic um, grounds from Daniel Smith. Uh, they've bought out clear, black, gold. Um, so sometimes, yes, I would do that. Um, but also, watercolor will work on most things. So I just give it a go. It's not always going to work. As beautifully as it does on watercolor paper or watercolor on ground um, I even love using watercolor on gesso and that is definitely not ideal it pastelizes everything but as long as you know and um, you're willing to experiment a little um, it can be um, just it's a joy to see what happens so you'll I, I love watercolor how it pulls and puddles and I say to it hey let's get go let's come down here I'm gonna bring you down here and and I'm going to do this and this. And then the watercolour has a little bit of a, once I go away and start walk, working on the next part of my work, it's still back here doing other things. So it's sinking into the paper here. It's going to have a moment. I actually love this lichen looking thing. If I wasn't expecting it, I could have a panic attack at this point. But remember, I, exp I already tested it. I already knew that it was going to do that. So um, I think that, that that's going to look great. So... You can prepare the paper and equally prepare yourself, um, I think, as a um, think, oh my gosh, it looks gorgeous here. Oh my gosh, it's gone a little bit neon. I don't know why. Oh, because of the matte paint, because my paint is magic. That's why. Okay, yep. My paint is magic. So I'll need a bit more water to really carry it over this, but it's almost behaving like acrylic at this point. This is a thicker uh, watercolor, this particular color. It's called 70s Eyeshadow. And it's just yummy of the yummy bums. Is there a reason you put washi tape on your pencil? Um, oh, this was, so I knew this was my set. I was drawing with my mum and my mum has, what do you call it when someone steals stuff, but nicely? Sticky fingers? Sticky fingers! So um, she had some of her stuff. I had some of my stuff and I need a complete set of everything. I can't have things missing because if I was doing a video or trying to do a lesson and then suddenly the colour I need isn't there, I my brain would be like, can't compute, can't deal. So that is why, <laughs> that's why these pencils have washi on them. Um, and also when I um, have retreats or um, workshops, um, I often suggest that people have, you know, put, washi tape on things because um, it just because a lot of people might have the same products um, so you know you don't end up losing your things I'm just going to put a bit of this Jiminy Cricket in the eyes so that her um, eyes um, Jiminy by the way that's Jiminy Cricket this green and it's just something that Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz says all the time originally it was a way of saying it's Jiminy Cricket JC Jesus Christ so that's a way of kind of an expletive, but not with, you know, being too naughty. If it's in The Wizard of Oz, it's not too naughty. Is there a book or a movie that got you in the Is there a book or a movie? I tell you what, there's a show we watch at the moment called Sirens. That's pretty good. Uh, a book or mer something for mermaids. <sighs> I've just always loved mermaids. I don't even know why. I when I would cons I'm a water baby. I spent more time above the water than sorry below the water than uh, on, swimming on it. Um, you know, my sister and I always have deep diving competitions. I don't know why. Um, and holding our breath underwater and see who could swim the further. So um, I'm just I I've just always adored the whole idea of mermaids. Um, I have a great affinity with the ocean. So when I come over um, here, I do want to knock this pink back a bit and integrate these antlers back in there. So I'm actually just going to come, I'm going to let my watercolour come over um, the um, area a little bit. 
and I love how I've got this purple up here that edging that I already did and this is not a watercolor paper by any means but what I'm uh, and I did a video um, I think it was a little bit ago um, with I'm using a paper from 1863 sometimes people get a little bit locked into only being able to use you know XYZ thing watercolor paper with watercolors and only use pastel with pastel and da 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 and it certainly the things might behave at their optimal on particular papers but that doesn't mean that you can't use them on other things um, because in locked in that's also sometimes people feeling like they don't know the rules and then they don't um, it keeps them away from joining in and doing the art and I want you to realize um, like I did that it doesn't like yeah sure there are some rules they're guidelines as um as we learnt in Pirates of the Caribbean they're more like guidelines it's you know it's not it's to keep you safe but also equally being safe isn't always the best it's only art it's only watercolors not that you know something that bad can't happen to you and that's why I wanted to do this book because you can experiment and we're creating together and as you know I don't mind making a mess so you can do that along with me you can blame me I'm, I did that on your work for you <laughs> when you finish a page do you use something to stop it rubbing when I no I don't um, sometimes I might put a fixative over it but I only really use fixative um, if I'm taking my work um, in public and like a journal um, where I used to do craft shows where I might have thousands and thousands and thousands of people rubbing it for something for some reason my work has a quality about it where people just love to rub it I don't know why they're rubbing it they're licking it and I'm there going um, excuse me can you please stop doing that but the work has to be able to survive the other thing I like to use is Liquitex matte varnish um, so you can spray some fixative over it so that all the water color, water soluble powders that sort of stuff is locked onto the paper and then you can put um, Liquitex, Liquitex matte varnish but like I said I don't do that um, all the time but there's um, wax paste there's a talcum powder there's all sorts of things you can add to stop pages sticking on a whole work but it's also hard to work over the top of those things and sometimes my pages aren't finished um, so it's an art journal uh, so I don't maybe I just grind them in enough I don't know but I and a bit of transference and bleed through I don't care I think it adds adds to the whole journal now what um, I've just been doing here is I've just been um, organizing myself again I'm just tidying up a little putting my cool things back in here my warm things back in here so I'm just getting ready to do the next girl I don't know about you but I am totally enjoying myself and thank you for joining me if you're here and if you're still hanging around um, I need something a bit juicier I've got a secret something coming that would be perfect but I can't uh, show it to you just yet so let's just persevere with this do you have a lot of art journals you use at the same time and are they organized in any way uh, my I wish they were organized uh, I have tried that um, I'm at the moment I have three big art journals and one small art journal that I'm working in but I've got one journal that is for new products that I have to try and keep separate because they're secret and I can't show people yet so uh, that is one journal oh she's pretty I like her I'm gonna start with this girl now I might give her a really light base first and then build up uh, so I'm just going to start with an egg, egg as I'm talking, just so you know what I'm doing. Um, and just to show you, there will be bleed through. Um, this is the paint and this and that. But I designed the book so you, the, the pages that we don't want to bleed through on are here, the ones that you're going to work on. And then these ones are from my journal. But um, I just use the bleed through in the next artwork. Sorry, what was the question again, girl? Sorry. How many journals? Uh, so yes, the answer to that is I've got one that is um, for future product, but then I got my jelly plate out the other day and I completely went over a lot of, I just went mad with it, I just was having so much fun. And um, so now that's become an art journal. 
So I've got oh, at least three on the go at the moment. And then under my, under my desk here, I've got like six. <laughs> um, so I kind of have a sixth sense of what's in each one. Uh, and I scan them all the time. Like every time I scan at all different stages because I can use them for backgrounds. And my feeling is then if I, I can't ever ruin anything, if, or if I do, I've scanned it. And then I can, I feel free to keep working on it. Um, even though I, you can't really ruin anything. Um, you know, it's just another opportunity to just keep going. Um, I still like to... It just helps me move uh, through. Sometimes you get that. I want to try and keep like a triangle of light here, but um, I'm just going to keep adding color and bring her up. But she's going to be a warmer tone. She's more of a cool pinky tone. Um, so I'm just going to bring this up here. Always looks awful at this point, like um, with the markers. Uh, and it's not a super smooth surface. Oh, it is a very smooth surface, but it's not ideal. But look how it is blending out. So when you first put it down, it looks streaky and horrible. So people very often panic a little with um, alcohol markers, with smooth markers, but then they do their trick. You just got to give them that little moment of time for them to do their little prettiness, and then um, life is good. <laughs> Uh, artists that I like, um, hmm, well, Botticelli is probably my the most influential. Um, just his work, the um, when I saw his, I was lucky enough to see his work uh, in the Uffizi Museum in um, Florence, and I just sat on the ground and bawled my eyes out. It was just so beautiful. Just. Just, oh my gosh, I'm almost going to cry now. It was just so, I don't know, it just touched something in my heart. Uh, Monet, I never thought I really jived with Monet. Like, I've, I just, you just grow up seeing it all the time. It's on, it's not on chocolate boxes, but, you know, you're just very au okay fait with it. And when I saw it in real life uh, at the Orangerie in Paris, again, very lucky that I've been able to travel and see these things, I lost my breath. I... I couldn't believe how beautiful the colours were. Um, the spirit behind it just was so amazing. Um, Van Gogh um, and uh, Toulouse the Trek. I love his his work. Looks like it's moving to me. I feel like if I uh, I try and play games with it, it if I um, look away, I feel like it's it's moving just as I've looked away. It's just the weirdest thing. Um, because it's got that vibrational energy. I don't know, it's just something... He just was a cheeky little man, and I think he's... Uh, so those um, those people very much, that art. Uh, but I had to see it in real life before I could appreciate it. So that's why if you... And Frida Kahlo as well. If you ever have an opportunity, if you have an art gallery near you or, you know, even a few hours' drive... Um, that you can that it has gone to the effort of bringing some of these masters um, to you like, make the effort and go it's just so different when you see these things in real life and you see the strokes and the way the colors um, get up close have a really good look you know, get to the galleries early so you can spend time looking at whatever it is um, but yeah, things that, um, I, and I get a lot of inspiration from um, my Facebook group uh, when I see beautiful artwork in there, um, oh, just such gorgeous things, um, the way that people are using my supplies, so that part is inspiring, but also what they're creating, um, you know, Kimball and there's Angelique Kramer and there's uh, Karen Lee and there's lots and lots of girls, Kerry does beautiful work, um, Kerry. Um, Shoals uh, uploaded a gorgeous thing the other day, so I just I, uh, I get inspiration. I don't sort of um, it's not as in oh I've got to try that, um, but as in um, I just love seeing people create and be creative. And um, you know I love Courtney Brooks or oh, Courtney Diaz. Sorry, I still call her by her uh, maiden name. So you know there are people who have been students of mine that. Um, I just love seeing them you know, flourish and grow and see their beautiful work. 
So I get inspiration from everything. And, you know, on Instagram every day, there's just gorgeous things. I'm not a Pinterest person, but Insta, oh my gosh, it's always beautiful things. What cities do you get most inspired? What cities? Well, I love my own, like my little bar and bay. But my cities that I get most inspired by, hmm, oh, Paris is pretty freaking gorgy. Um, I love traveling in America as well. Um, I went to Sedona and I wouldn't call that a city, but, um, and there's so many places I would love to go to as well. Just adding a little bit more of this. So what's going to be happening because this isn't marker paper, it's not really designed for these. It's not going to blend out when they're a disparity, like this is purple and their skin tone, you know, they're actually opposites just about on the color wheel. So I'm going to get different effects, um, but I like that too. It's going to be very different looking to this girl, just with this. But then I can add softness with other materials. So I can, one of the beauties of this, oh, actually I might do blue under here. Um, one of the beauties of this is that um, it's an easy uh, thing to, it's a base that's easy to work off with, with other things. So this is just going to um, create these other colors. I love it. So I've got like a mid-tone as well as this weird blue highlight. Might have this up here as well. Oh, I kind of like that weird, I don't know, like a weird pale gray. What is that color? I like it. I like where these are overlapping with the watercolor so that they're sort of disappearing, it has a more of an atmospheric kind of effect. And keep in mind, it's all just art journal, it's just, you know, I'm just having fun, I'm hanging out with you guys. Um, you know, I'm not creating a masterpiece. Masterpiece, masterpiece. No, I'm not interested in that. If that happens as I go, awesome. But aside from that, nobody cares. <gasps> Oh, I love it. Um, yeah, I quite like all these questions. Keep them coming. So I'm going to add, um, let's add watercolor on this for her cheek. So I've got, um, I'm going to, what color? Actually, I want to add, no, no, no. Yes, yes, yes. Because I want to do pencil, but pencil and watercolor resist each other. So... Let me do this, let me do this. I might go with a bit of Frida. And I need a bit of clean um, mixing space. So I've got a little bit of Frida, which is this very, very pinky red. It's one of my favorite of the watercolors. Um, also, you'll hear me say that about every single watercolor. So don't feel so special, Frida. <laughs> But I want to make it a little bit peachy. I want to warm it up a little, a little more neutralized. So to neutralize it, I would add the opposite. So I'm going to start wanting to add, um, so for pink, a bit of a turquoise. That'll um, neut neutralize it a little. Um, or blue, that'll make it purple. But let's get this bit of a turquoise happening. And I just want to neutralize it. Oh, that's way too much. Okay, so she is strong. What about, I might do this actually. Okay, there we go. And then to make it lighter, just add more water until you get down to the color that you want. And test. Oh yeah, that's gonna be pretty. Cause I wanted to have really vivid cheeks like over here. I'm gonna add a little bit of that in here. A little bit of that in here and then I'm just going to come around the edge of that just to soften it out a little. How long have I been going for girls? Uh, a little while. Too long? Yeah, People haven't died of boredom, it's all good. It's mixed media, that's the joy. Oh, so I quite like that and I like, uh, I've tricked this bit of red over this side. Uh, I like the way that's sitting on there. 
this is actually something that I, when I'm working on something, I say this out loud, oh, I like that, I like that. Rather than, I don't like that, I always start with, okay, well, this is working and it might be one little tiny thing and that puts me in a good frame and then I can look at things that aren't, you know, resonating and then look at those and say, okay, how can I get them up to this? Rather than looking at something and going, eh, I hate that. I, I try and approach things a different uh, from the other way around so that it's more motivational for myself. Um, I just want to get a little bit more of this skin tone in. But I just want it to be light. So I'm just coming over in little uh, strokes like this. I want it to be a little bit scratchy. I can come in with a second layer if I want to. But it will soften out and then I might come in. I have got my little skin tone set here. What's your favourite art supply in your line? And if you could only use one forever, what would it be? That is a question I can't answer because that changes every day. So the question was, what is your my favorite art supply from my collection and um, if i could only have ever one art supply um what would i use well i can't answer that that's that's ridiculous <laughs> don't make me choose um yeah i i um oh, just put my pink paint brush in my water again in my tea probably the most useful thing are watercolors and colored pencils but I couldn't have just one colour, I couldn't have just one thing. But I would also need the paint and then also the markers. So I need all of those things, plus the water pastels, incredible ink, and, <laughs> and everything. I need everything. That's, I can't, I, that's, that's cruel to make me answer that. So I've got a bit of tinsel, um, incredible ink in this one. Uh, I'm just going to come around here a little. So that's still wet. I'm being silly putting... Um, anything on here but I know that this is just a nice light um, color here so I can just add a little bit so I, yeah like I said I do have a video of this coming uh, my friend Tammy sent me these and I've been having fun with them and they have um, I'll show you in the video but they're very different the inks going through this are very different when they go through the water brushes or with a paintbrush. Uh, they behave very, very differently. So it's all it's quite interesting. I quite like that. Maybe, should I have done her eyes open as well? I'm not sure. I'll leave it as it is for now. Oh, she needs a highlight. Where is my pen? So I'm just going to add a little bit of highlight here. Any advice on colour choices? Colour choice, I use colour quite intuitively, but I also studied at the School of Colour and Design, and that's where I discovered I'd, I was intuitively picking colours. Um, but you can, it's definitely something you can learn. Um, I keep the colour mind, the colour wheel in mind. In fact, when I was talking about blending these, um, I spoke out loud, you know, and was saying what, you know, what would suit this, what would, you know, what should go there. Um, I think that that, um, speaking out loud, looking at whatever it is that you've put down and then asking it what, um, I want you to have something blue or green next to you or when you speak it through, um, you give yourself courage for a start. It's like whistling. <laughs> give a little whistle and then you're actually talking through your putting some brain thought power, brain power, the muse, that she knows um, to start helping you with those choices, that part of your brain that's locked onto that. Um, so I would say, yeah, start talking out loud to yourself. And, um, oh, I love this. Yum. So this is all dry, not that it was wet actually, but oh, I can just add a little bit more definition in here bit more depth in this color around here so remember how bright that I mean it's still a very bright pop but I've lifted it all up I really I like it I like it a lot gouache I love gouache gouache is gorge um, you can make your own gouache and I did a did I do a video on it we certainly talked about it in my Facebook group 
Um, you can add incredible ink to white gouache and make your own gouache. Make your own colours um, in these. They're gorgeous. They are gorgeous. I think it's on my blog, actually. I have a blog post on it, a guest blog post. It was fabulous. Um, just on my brain, I can't... It's so janedavenport.com, if you just check the blog, you'll see there's... People have made some fantastic um, contributions of different um, things. There's colour recipes for Incredible Ink. Uh, all sorts of different things you'll find them very, very useful. Um, gosh, I love this colour. This one is a colour called Bear. Where is... I just need, I need a little bit of you. So here we have Mermaid. Just going to add a little bit of Mermaid. And I have this philosophy of everything's forgiven in a sketch. So if things get too perfect, I like to jump them back up again and get them... Um, sketchy again because your eye just travels through the artwork um like with Monet you know with I'm not comparing my work to his but just that idea um Botticelli as well like there are areas that are rough um as well as um perfectly designed and all his weird um um what I'm trying to say his his uh, proportions are so weird, like the necks are so long, and the you know the his proportions are so crazy, and I just it makes me I just die of happiness looking at it. Ongre is another favourite artist, and his dimensions are mental, but they it just looks so good, it looks so good. Reality's overrated. We, you know you can have a little bit of. Oh la la, in your life, why not? <coughs> People can hear you saying that, girl. <coughs> okay, well, I think that that's at a point where I can just say hello, goodbye, and I think I've really quite enjoyed myself there. I'm just going to do one more thing. The, my power pastels were just in the corner of my eye. And I just like doing a little bit of this. I don't know why it looks good. I just to me it does. Just a little bit of. So I usually take some of the colours that are in here, and then just to get it in the background. And power pastels just sit up above everything. So I just like to add a little bit of ooh la la. Could even add some lines some stripes whatever i wanted to um the because the paper has behaved strangely with the um the watercolor it's i've got this sort of lichen effect like i've almost added salt so it's something that i would you know love i would probably try and get that effect um with something else but it just happens naturally if you use the wrong kinds of paper so i just want to encourage you to you know be a little bit um brazen and a little bit um, crazy with your different things. I'm gonna just grab this camera again. Oh, sorry, am I over the thing? I'm just going to flip her around again. Oh, that was my hand. And um, oh, here's my studio. I've just tidied it up. It's gone through a bit of a reorganisation. Oh, our winners, our winners. So thank you for those who are have stuck through. Angus has just handed me our winners. So on our Instagram. Uh, Julie Art, congratulations. Um, we will DM you. And Natalie K on uh, Facebook, in the Facebook group. Um, yes. So if there are any other questions before I sign off, uh, go and drink lots more tea and lemon and try and not get the flu. I'm not going to get the flu. It's just a little temporary sore throat. But thank you so much for joining me. Um, yeah, we've got those new little mermaid things happening. My books are available just about everywhere now. Michael, Joanne's, uh, Barnes & Noble, Amazon, all fantastic bookstores. Thank you so much for buying one if you have. 
a lot of people have bought two copies, one to keep pristine and one to enjoy in. So if you feel that you can't work in it because it's a book, don't worry about that. Just get in there, add your own creativity to it and have just fun. And like I said, the whole reason I did that book is so that uh, you can feel like you are creating with someone else. I love creating with other people, having a little arty party. And um, I know that not everyone can do that. And some people, you just might not have another creative friend that you can you know, create along with. But you do, you have me. So <laughs> that's why we've got the book there. So you can grab the book at any point and we can have a little bit of fun together. Collaborate. Um yeah, there's also the Fabulous Figures book. Uh, I've got my online workshops, blah, 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 all those things. Come and join the Facebook group. Anyway, I'm just really happy that you uh, came along today and that we had some fun. I'd love you to try some of the things that I'm talking about. You can make your own substitutions, of course, with uh, other brands, but hello. <laughs> and you can find my new smooth markers, Um yeah, I'm fantastic independent retailers, michaels.com, um, hobbycraft.co.uk will be stocking the collection. And uh, yeah, janedavenport.com, we always have them as well. So just, you know, scrapbook.com, art from the heart, hobby work, and oh, there's tons, there's tons of fantastic stores that stock my collections. And I'm very grateful to them all because it means that I get to create more things for you and I love creating art supplies. I love using the art supplies. I love seeing other people use the art supplies. I think art supplies make us happier people. That's my belief. Anyway, thank you for joining me and I'll see you in the Facebook group all around. Bye. <laughs> and